Welcome to the NACE Gallery at The Paint Spot. The Paint Spot is a retail store run by artists. Our gallery features local artists who inspire other artists. We value that art is not always pretty or commercial in nature, and we prepare the space for something unexpected. My favorite part is when a customer can come through the store and they come in for art supplies, but then they're stopped in their tracks by a beautiful show. Uh, the show we have running right now is called Reflections with Dave Thomas. We hope you come by and see the works for yourself. They are a wonderful mixed media approach with uh, oil paint, spray paint, resin, um, latex, a bit of drawing, um, wonderful adventure in art materials to see as well. And uh, we're welcome, welcome to the gallery, David. It's nice to have you. So your commercial work, you do big works, mm -hmm. big works. And uh, we've got a few images we're gonna share on that. Yeah, um, how do you juggle your corporate work with this, this more private uh, studio um, practice? So the commercial work sort of always gets precedent. It tends to be where most of my income comes from. And raising a family as an artist, it, it, it's, you know, you gotta follow that route. I do love it. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's never really a problem unless I have, say, a show I'm working towards. And, you know, I've got a show coming up in four months and I just sold three months worth of mural. Now I'm, I'm, you know, going crazy. But, but for the most part, it, it, it's, it's kind of nice, nice having that back and forth. I do love both. So my, my way of working with the commercial work is sort of like I'll, I'll do a Photoshop rendering to show the client just mm -hmm. so they can sign off on it. They know exactly what they're getting. And um, then I just go point A to point B as quick as possible mm -hmm. and as professionally as possible. I mean, I really do care that the work is good. There's still some of me in it because mm -hmm. I, like, I take their ideas and I'm like, how can I make this work? But I mean, the amount of me in it is you know, sometimes 20%, sometimes yeah. maybe 30%, where that was pretty much 100%. Right. That was exciting for me. So that piece um, was my first actually doing my fine art as a mural, which I'm really trying, I'm trying to, it's always been commercial mural work, my personal work, and there's been no bridge between the two. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of the first one, and that's what I want to do more of is like, and funny enough, that's probably my most ex successful mural like as far as feedback and everything I've mm -hmm. gotten it's been much higher on the ones where I do what I like instead of just doing what everybody else wants me to do. Um, whereas my fine art it's much more of a conversation a push and a pull and you know I'll, I'll paint a realistic face and drag a squeegee over it and react to that you know maybe you just see the eye and I can never get that mark that way without taking that chance but, but with my mural work it's just in and out as quick as possible so. Oh, let's talk about that risk for a moment because your work is beautiful. So you've just rendered that face perfect. You've got the Thank nose you. right. You've got the mouth right. You're like, yeah, I'm going to splat some paint on that. Yep. Yikes. How do you just, you just go for it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I don't think of it in that terms. The way I think of painting is it's all mark made, making. So mm -hmm. uh, to me, a realistic face is just a mark the same way as blotch of spray paint or throwing paint from halfway across the studio out the painting will be mm -hmm. I mean it's all marks and, and mm -hmm. so whatever the painting needs it needs and if it needs that and, and sometimes they just end up looking stiff you know you spent eight hours laboring on it but you just don't love it and dragging that squeegee across it just um, it interrupts it in such a way that that you can react to that and it just sort of gets things going again so so your kids are obviously your muse how do they like being in your paintings? Like they've grown up around it their entire mm -hmm. lives. I've always hired models and stuff. Um, I think they've just figured out how to monetize it. So it used to be they, you know, they'd sort of pose for Slurpees. <laughs> uh, now that I'm selling work a bit more, they, they want a commission. So the gallery gets their chunk and the kid gets their chunk and whatever's left, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> most of these are just from walks we go on, the River mm -hmm. Valley and stuff. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, they're not posed at all. It's really just sort of stuff that happens in everyday life. So. Nice. So the hoodie, the uniform of the youth, how, how is that kind of as a symbol in your work? This is sort of a theme throughout the show. Hmm. I love this, this hoodie. Yeah, it's not really a symbol. I don't know. It just, it handed up be there, being there. Again, it's a lot of the, my reference material is just from walks that I go with with the kids. So it, it's not really on purpose. I just sort of go through photos later and be like, oh, this'll work or that'll work. Um, this one, I, it works with the title. I did 
the, there is some symbolism to the hood, but for the most part, there's really not. It's just an aesthetic thing. Whatever speaks to me at the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like the hood. It's kind of a universal, especially when they put their hood up and turn their yeah. head away. It's a very universal kind of private. Yeah, that's what I thought this one. So he's like weathering a, there's either a storm or whether it's just one of those loops that life throws you, but he's getting ready to, you know, ready for some. You're getting hungry and yeah. hungry. In. So can you talk about your color palette in this show, which is really refreshing? This is something new for me. I usually never use yellow. It's one of those colors I'll put it on my palette and it never gets used. Um, Brody, who is my model for this, we were going on the walk and we just happened to have that yellow jacket and it was fall. And something about the colors against the leaves, there was trees originally on some of these and they, they just didn't feel right. They, they, they got x day but I, you know, I, I got to use yellow more for the first time and I really enjoy it. I always liked Francis Bacon, you know, those little paintings with the, you know, the acid yellows against the purples. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so that influenced it. Uh, the other thing is spray paint. These spray paint my work. I generally like I tend to subdue my colors. I'll take bits of other colors that are in the painting and sort of knock colors down. And uh, with spray paint you can't do that. Whatever's in the can is what you get. You know and you splat it on there and it looks many times it looks really alien compared to whatever else is on there which I love because then you react to that and it's that push and pull that you get. Yes. Yeah, it's a uh, lovely way to add like a bit of poetry or atmosphere to it. Absolutely. Yeah. But this one here with Brody and this splat of of, of white mm -hmm. was that from across the room or like uh, did you was that in like were you hoping to get a space like how did that come yeah, about? Yeah, no, it wasn't across the room, but it was <laughs> maybe four or five feet away. But yeah. yeah, I mean, it's funny how you can kind of get not too bad at directing these things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll have a like a big squeegee and I'll put a big glob on the end of the squeegee and flick it at it and sometimes they hand up in the wrong spots but you, you know as accidental as they are they are kind of planned because if yeah. it is completely in the wrong spot I will carefully wipe it out yeah. and then you know yeah. touch that up or whatever. Yeah. yeah so there is quite a bit of intention. I love some of Absolutely. them the way they just they just add to it. Yeah I mean some are really just flying by the seat of my pants. The one in the middle there that's yeah. in the resin. Mm -hmm. um, it, that white up top was literally, I was, the, the wall was covered in paint behind it and I couldn't get a good view on what I was doing. So I was painting white latex above it and I was, I got a drip on it. I was so ready to give up on painting anyways. I took a, a three inch brush loaded with latex paint and globbed it over the head and let it drip over the face and then reacted to that. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's a lot of push and pull. Yeah, and it, it's one of my favorite pieces because of that push and pull ambiguity be creep between foreground and background. I mean, oh, good. that's just a classic, uh, classic change up. So that white background around this little girl with her LOL shirt, my favorite picture of the show. Um, and her big yeah. hands and this confrontational glare. Yeah. <laughs> so classic, perfect for that age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me about that. Was that one of the first pieces of the show or? Uh, that is an earlier work. I, yeah. That's probably the earliest work in the show. It would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's my daughter. I was. I. I had a totally different painting in mind, and I was just trying to get her to pose her hands for it. And you know, I'd be telling her, "Can you just get your hands like this?" And I'd be snapping photos. And I'd be like, "No, turn it more like this," and snapping my photos. And at, I finally I got the hands what I wanted. And then looking back at the photos, it was the face that was so perfect in them. So I handed up with using the face that was actually with the hands. Yeah. She was wearing the LOL shirt. Yeah. And I just started realizing like there's so many contradictions just in that pose, the face, the shirt. So I, I actually painted it with contradictions too. So I painted it quite harsh and edgy, but with these girly pinky and white colors. And so, so the whole painting is all about these contradictions. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Absolutely. Please, if anybody's in the area, walking through, come down, uh, check the show up, take a card, uh, hit me on Instagram and let me know what you think. Thanks, David, for sharing your work. We're really glad to have it in our gallery. The show at the Paint Spot runs until December 7th. We hope you come by and see the work for yourself in person. 
To see more of Dave's work, check out his website, davethomasart.com. And of course, on Instagram, you'll find him at davethomas66. All of David's pieces are for sale, and uh, come by and pick out one for yourself. Um, so remember, beautiful materials and more at paintspot.ca.